Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today we're doing more benchmarking and, well, this one's quite interesting. A few days ago I compared some high-end, uh, more expensive 8-core CPUs, but the week prior to that we did receive the affordable 4-core Ryzen 3 CPUs. So I've shifted gears yet again back to those affordable CPUs as there was quite a bit more testing there I wanted to do. Uh, speaking of which, this will be sort of just a part one of what will be at least a three-part benchmark series, but I'll talk about that a bit later on in the video. For this video, which I have boldly titled Ryzen 3, the ultimate gaming benchmark guide, will follow the same format as my Pentium G4560, the ultimate gaming benchmark guide. I published that video back in January of this year, and at the time, Hardware Unboxed it had about 45,000 subscribers, but the video did well and now has over 180,000 views, uh, over 4,000 likes, and less than 100 dissies. So needless to say, a lot of you really enjoyed that format, and that's the reason why I've decided to do it again. For those of you that didn't see the Pentium G4560 video, the idea here is to test CPU gaming performance with a number of different tiered GPUs. So for this video, I will be benchmarking the Ryzen 3 CPUs along with a few competing processors from Intel using the GeForce GTX 1060, GTX 1070, and GTX 1080, all at 1080p. Although I am only testing a single resolution, the fact that we have three very different performing GPUs will give you an idea of how things scale at various resolutions. It'll also give those sensible folks pairing a budget CPU with a budget GPU a real idea of what to expect. Meanwhile, by including the GTX 1080, you can see what kind of performance a faster GPU might enable should you have the CPU power to take advantage of it. Please note, due to the limited pixel real estate, I've been restricted to the number of CPUs that I can really compare in a single graph before it just becomes an incomprehensible mess. So while I have included a good range of processors, I'm sure there'll be an additional processor or two that you would have liked to see included. But as I said, there will be a few follow-up videos. So these aren't the only CPUs I'll be testing in this way. They're just the only ones I've tested so far. Anyway, let's check out the results and then I'll discuss a few more things at the end of the video. To the benchmarks. All right, so first up we have Battlefield 1, and as you can see, there's a bit going on here. The blue bars represent the Intel processors, and we have the Core i5-7400 and Pentium G4560 here. Meanwhile, the red bars represent the AMD processors, which includes the Ryzen 5 1400, Ryzen 3 1300X, and R3 1200. As you can see, five CPUs were tested three times in Battlefield 1 using the GeForce GTX 1060, GTX 1070, and GTX 1080. Looking at the GTX 1060 results first, we see no variance whatsoever between the CPUs tested. The G4560 provided the same numbers as the i5-7400, as did all the AMD CPUs. Moving to the more powerful GTX 1070 graphics card, and things start to change a little. Now, we know based on previous testing with high-end CPUs that the 1070 is on average 35% faster than the 1060, as it packs 50% more cores. Using the Pentium G4560, we see that the minimum frame rate is improved by just 11% for what looks like a very obvious CPU bottleneck. Illustrating this point further is the fact that the Core i5-7400 boosted performance by 31% with the 1070. The R5 1400 also allowed for a nice 28% bump in the minimum frame rate. And now remember, it is possible to overclock the Ryzen CPUs, but to what will no doubt be the dismay of many, I'm going to save the overclocking of the Ryzen CPUs and feature them in a different video. For this one, I just want to establish a baseline performance. Let's go with that. Uh, there was a heap of testing just to get as far as we have for this video. Uh, basically, 30 benchmark runs per game as we're taking a three run average, nine games tested in total, so around 270 benchmark runs just for this video. That being said, the Ryzen 3 1200 and 1300X give us a good idea of how well these CPUs will respond to overclocking, given that the 1300X is already 5% faster with the GTX 1070. When compared to the G4560, the R3 1200 did allow for an 8% increase in the minimum frame rate. Once we move to the GTX 1080, it becomes quite clear that none of these CPUs are capable of extracting anywhere near the maximum performance from this GPU in a game that relies heavily on CPU performance. 
The i5-7400 and R5-1400 only saw a boost to the minimum frame rate of 4% when compared to the 1070 results. Interestingly, the Ryzen 3 CPUs do a little better at around a 7% increase, but given the GTX 1080 is around 30% faster than the 1070, it's fair to say we're nowhere near extracting maximum performance here. F1 2016 is very heavy on the CPU, and we see this even when testing the GTX 1060 as the lower end or lower clock CPUs drop off the pace ever so slightly. The margins certainly aren't noteworthy, but when compared to Battlefield 1, there is a distinct difference here. Jumping to the GTX 1070 boosted the average frame rate for all five configurations quite substantially, though it was a different case for the minimum frame rate, and this is where we will focus our attention. Here the Pentium G4560 saw no improvement at all, while the Ryzen 3 1200 did see a noteworthy 21% performance boost. Thanks to the superior clock speeds, the 1300X also outpaced the SMT-enabled R5 1400. Still, it was the Intel Kaby Lake i5-7400 that provided the best results out of the box with a minimum of 77 FPS. Moving to the GTX 1080, we see little to no performance improvement with the faster graphics card using these low-end to mid-range CPUs. Moving to Far Cry Primal, which is typically a GPU-bound game, we find some interesting results. I say typically GPU-bound because we typically test with high-end CPUs. The challenge the CPU faces in this game is the fact that it really only taxes a single thread. Anyway, using the GTX 1060, performance is much of a muchness regardless of the CPU used. It's a similar story with the GTX 1070. Well, almost. For whatever reason, Intel's high clock KB Lake CPUs dominate this title, and here we see the Core i5-7400 pulling well ahead from the pack when looking at the minimum frame rate. That said though, this was the end of the road for the i5-7400 as installing the faster GTX 1080 basically produced the exact same results. Total War Warhammer is a very CPU demanding game and can make good use of multiple threads. Right away, even with the GTX 1060, we can see that the G4560 is getting a little left behind. The plucky little Pentium processor is still able to provide playable performance, though the Ryzen CPUs were noticeably better. Despite that, increasing the rendering power with the GTX 1070 did little to improve the frame rates. The i5-7400 did see a nice 15% boost though, even if it isn't getting the most out of the GTX 1070. That being the case, the move to the GTX 1080 made little to no difference, and we were faced with an extreme CPU bottleneck for all five configurations. Next up we have Overwatch, another game that can put many threads to work. Surprisingly, all five CPU configurations were able to max out the GTX 1060, which obviously includes the dual-core HT-enabled G4560. Moving to the GTX 1070 changes things quite a bit, and now we see the G4560 falling well behind, as it's now only able to improve over the 1060 results by a 10% margin. Meanwhile, the Ryzen 3 1200 enjoyed a 27% performance increase and a 34% increase for the R3 1300X. In fact, the 1300X was comparable to the i5-7400 here, while the R5-1400 pushed a little further ahead. Upgrading to the GTX 1080 does little to improve performance here, though we are seeing better gains here than compared to most of the games we've looked at so far. The R5 1400 minimum frame rate was boosted by 12%, though just 9% for the R3 1300X. Still though, the G4560 created an even more extreme bottleneck and only boosted performance by 4%. Moving on to a very popular game, we have The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, and here we see the GTX 1060 completely neutralizes the playing field. All CPUs were limited to a minimum of 45 FPS, as this is what the GTX 1060 dips down to in this title at 1080p using said quality settings, and no amount of CPU power can change that. Even with the GTX 1070 handling the rendering work, the CPU results are mostly the same, with the exception of the G4560, which starts to drop off the pace a bit. Once we install the 1080, performance does start to differ between the various CPU models. The i5-7400 was king here, though the R5-1400 and R3-1300X weren't far off the pace, and will no doubt steal the show once overclocked. Due to popular demand, I'm bringing back Rainbow Six Siege, and I'm glad I have as it provides some interesting results. Here we see even with the GTX 1060 installed, the Ryzen CPUs are clearly faster than the Intel processors when looking at the all-important minimum frame rate. Moving to the GTX 1070, the Ryzen CPUs remain strong, though it has to be said the G4560 is hanging in there quite well also. From this point forward, though, we are pretty much limited by the CPU. Uh, moving to the GTX 1080 didn't do much for us, especially when using the G4560 and R3-1200. 
Moving on to World of Tanks, this is a game that doesn't really hammer the CPU in the same way that Total War Warhammer or Battlefield 1 does, for example. CPU utilization is quite poor and multi-core CPUs aren't really properly utilized. That said though, as the title isn't really that demanding on the CPU, you'll find that CPUs such as the Pentium G4560 do quite well. That said, the dual core Intel CPU is clearly peaking with the GTX 1060, but it's doing so with a minimum frame rate of well over 130 FPS. It's a similar story with the R3 1200, though it was a little slower at around 120 FPS, but again, at these frame rates in this titles, it's kind of a negligible difference. So basically the difference in performance between these CPUs really isn't important as they all push over 120 FPS for the most part. I guess the point here being that for 1080p performance, you need nothing more than a GTX 1060 for this title. And finally, we have Counter-Strike Global Offensive. And like World of Tanks, it really is all about the CPU here for those high frame rates competitive gamers crave to reduce things like input lag for maximum responsiveness. That said though, it still doesn't take advantage of modern multi-core CPUs. So again, the G4560 is able to keep pace with the R3 1200, something it can't do in the more modern titles. The i5-7400 is again king in these situations where we're relying on a single core. That said, the Ryzen 3 1300X was never that far behind, and with a little overclocking, should be able to match or possibly even beat the Core i5 processor. Basically, those CSGO gamers need to worry less about their GPU and place pretty much all of their attention on the CPU. All right, so we've just seen how these five CPUs compare in nine different games using the GeForce GTX 1060, GTX 1070, and GTX 1080. The spread of games used were quite different and in my opinion, cover all scenarios. The results are interesting and they tell us a number of things. Starting with the demanding modern titles such as Battlefield 1, uh, F1 2016, Total War Warhammer, The Witcher 3, Overwatch and even Far Cry Primal, what we found was that despite being modern and very much able to take advantage of high-end hardware, they're also not pushing entry-level hardware to the point of becoming obsolete. So I guess it's kind of a happy medium then. Even with a mid-range GPU such as the GTX 1060, we found little difference between the Pentium G4560 and Core i5-7400. And the same was true for the Ryzen 5 1400, which is another quad core, but that particular model has support for eight threads thanks to SMT. Uh, also keep in mind the GTX 1060, it's not exactly slow either. It's basically on par with the mighty GTX 980 from the previous generation. So if you're gaming with a graphics card equivalent to say the GeForce GTX 1060 or something slower, and you plan on playing newly released titles, then the Ryzen 3 CPUs will really be as good as any. Now what we've seen here is once you upgrade your GPU in the future or games become more demanding, Ryzen 3 will remain relevant and within reason gamers won't need to upgrade that CPU. Uh, we of course saw this when moving from the GTX 1060 to the GTX 1070, whereas with the G4560 for example, we often saw little to no performance gains uh, when going with the faster GTX 1070, whereas we did see a gain with Ryzen 3. Again, as I touched on earlier, you can of course overclock the Ryzen 3 CPUs for even greater performance, but this is something I'll look at in a future video. For those playing older but still very popular titles such as World of Tanks or Counter-Strike for example, things do get a little more tricky while also becoming more simplified at the same time. Kind of odd, I know. The tricky bit being which CPU is the best choice for these types of games. The type of game that really only utilizes a single thread. The Core i5 was clearly the superior choice here, but as a little bit of a spoiler, I can tell you that overclocking Ryzen 3 does allow the red team to take the lead over the i5-7400. That said, if you're after as many frames as possible in this competitive shooter, then getting an unlocked Intel quad core and overclocking the snot out of it is the best way to go. Still, if spending as little money as possible is the aim, then Ryzen 3 is a much cheaper alternative and really a much better CPU for all occasions, at least when compared to the locked i5-7400. Then we have the more modern competitive shooters such as Rainbow Six Siege and of course Overwatch. Here Ryzen 3 pretty well matched the i5-7400 before any overclocking even took place and when compared to the G4560 it was clearly the superior CPU, at least when looking at the Overwatch results with the GTX 1070. Jumping back to the modern, more well-built titles such as Battlefield 1, we see that no matter which CPU you choose, Ryzen 3 or the locked i5 neither have enough in the tank to utilize a graphics card, packing a GPU with more rendering power than, say, the GTX 1070, at least under these conditions. 
As resolutions are increased further, load will be placed more on the GPU and the CPU will likely become less of a concern. Even so though, we know for a fact that no matter how many pixels your GPU can spit out, it isn't going to render more than around 110 FPS in Battlefield 1 with a stock Ryzen 3 CPU. Likewise, in a game such as CSGO, you aren't going to break that 300 FPS barrier without a little bit of tinkering in the BIOS. Still, just focusing on the out-of-the-box performance seen in this video, it's pretty clear that for the vast majority of PC gamers, Ryzen is going to be an ideal solution and we'll see them well off into the future. As a side note, I know there will be those of you who will say, I wish you'd tested with more realistic GPUs such as the GTX 1050 Ti, 1050 or perhaps even the GT 1030, but the fact of the matter is, I didn't need to. The data would have told us nothing we don't already know, and it would have shown yeah, nothing different than what we saw with the GTX 1060. The frame rates would have of course been lower, but all the CPUs would have produced the same lower frame rate. Anyway, next up I'll be looking at how the Ryzen 3 1200 and Ryzen 5 1400 compare when overclocked to 4 GHz. And then after that I'll check out Ryzen 3 against the overclocked Core i5-2500K and FX8370. It's kind of an upgrader's guide. Uh, those comparisons of course will follow the same format as you've seen here. So the same 9 games will be tested with the same 3 GPUs. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm very keen to see the results. Until then, take it easy. I'm your host, Steve. I'll see you again soon.